So what we have here is a film that was donated by George J. Jenkins, Jr. of uh, Pocasset. Uh, this is footage of his father, George Jenkins, Sr. of Monument Beach, and his friends taking a sailing trip from Barnstable Harbor to Cuddyhunk. And they're using the Cape Cod Canal as a shortcut to get there. Um, it's believed to be uh, 1927 that they were going through the Cape Cod Canal. When they first enter the canal, they're going to encounter uh, the breakwater, which is the jetty that you see by Scusset Beach. So you can first start seeing um, that as they're entering the canal. That will be on the right-hand side. Um, so we see the tower at the end, we see the, jetty, the rock jetty. On the left-hand side, you're starting to get a sense of what the waterfront looked like in Sandwich. You still see the old freezer plant, which uh, was only taken down a few years ago, and you see a lot of the commercial waterfront. Coming to meet them is a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers traffic control boat. The reason why we think it's 1927 is because uh, under the uh, River and Harbors Act of 1927 is when the government was authorized to purchase the canal. Uh, later on, we're going to see a private toll collector booth. The government didn't take over until March of 1928. So we're seeing the commercial waterfront now. You see a freighter um, tied up at the bulkhead. Um, we see a pipeline, so they were constantly dredging the canal to maintain it and improve it and keep it open at this point. So we saw that dredge pipe, and now we're coming up on the Sagamore Bridge, the drawbridge opening up in front of you. On the left-hand side, you're going to see some commercial buildings. That's Keith Carr, uh, Keith Carr Works, or Keith Manufacturing Plant, major employer of the time. On the right-hand side, you can see the sandy hills of Borndale. Uh, the opening of the bridges is 140 feet wide. Um, so a fairly narrow opening uh, for vessels heading up and down the original Cape Cod Canal. And then you see the Sagamore Bridge closing behind the guys. Um, and then you're going to be coming into the Bourndale area. Um, this was the area that many of the mariners complained about because of the constant shoaling there. It was very narrow. It was windy. Um, you can see really the sandy sides and a lot of the erosion that was taking place. So you get a good sense of that. You're going to have a very brief view of the ferry. There was a ferry, so there's a fourth crossing in Belmont's Canal. Besides the bridges, you had a ferry boat that crossed right near where Pole 180 would be today. So it was a very quick glimpse of that. And then you come right up on the Bourne Bridge. Uh, the mainland side is on the right. The Cape side is on the left. What I love is that you see one car waiting on the Cape side. And they're not upset they're waiting for the bridge to open and close. They're happy and excited to see the boat go by. Waving. Yay. All right. And then the next bridge you're going to encounter is the railroad bridge. Bascule style lift bridge uh, with a single counterweight on the north or the mainland side. So it's opening up onto um, the mainland side. And again, all the clearance, uh, the clearance for all three bridges was 140 feet wide. Uh, the railroad bridge was only seven feet above sea level, so that had to be open and closed all the time, where at least the Highway bridges had a clearance, I think, of 41 feet above mean sea level, so they didn't have to open and close all of the time. So now they're going to pass on through. And then you see them heading out into Buzzards Bay, just like today with the southwesterly winds, it gets pretty choppy. You pass a couple of rock piles. Uh, Belmont's Canal, the can approach channel in Buzzards Bay was much different. They had to take a series of turns and go through Finney's Harbor behind Hog Island and Mashinee Island versus the straight approach that you see now. That straight approach was put in in the 1930s. So that's at minute number four. We're going to zoom ahead um, to their return trip uh, right around minute... Uh, nine, and you'll see them coming by Hog Island 1 and 2, uh, so they're coming up Buzzards Bay, they're going to head eastbound through the canal. On their right-hand side, they did encounter Wings Neck, uh, which is, you can, Wings Neck is still there today, along with the lighthouse, and then they're going to encounter the toll collector, and the toll collector is on their right-hand side because their main office for operating is now near where Tidal Flats Recreation Area is. They go underneath the railroad bridge. Uh, and coming up on the Bourne Bridge, and that's about it for coverage for the canal. And then you just see them entering Cape Cod Bay and cleaning up on their return trip home.